Hey guys, it's Andrea. I'm in my kitchen. Um, I've just been asked a really smart question by one of my athletes. He's an adventure racer and he's racing this weekend. And he was asking about, like obviously we're working on race week and his taper and his preparation regarding fueling and recovery for the week. And he asked, you know, what are the pros doing um, in Ironman or bigger distance events and yeah it's a great question and how do I answer where do I start when I answer this well you've got to remember that everyone is is different um, some athletes would have different levels of efficiency regarding how how they're using their fuels um, and that will depend on their training and their training diet now on race day I recommend, and most of the research will say, that we have very high carbohydrate requirements. And the evidence would lie in favor of us doing a carbohydrate load before our, our event. Um, a lot of the carbohydrate um, studies will indicate a three-day load um, in advance of your race so that your glycogen stores are optimized, so that you have more fuel in the tank for, for race day. And the reason is that our glycogen stores are limited. Um, we want to have them as stored up as possible for the event. And then on race day as well, we're going to have to top those up so that we can achieve um, optimal carbohydrate oxidation rates. Um, and, and through our training and nutrition and our preparation, we can achieve maximum carbohydrate absorption rates through the gut um, to then lead to improved delivery of carbohydrate as glucose um, to the muscles. So on race day, we're sort of looking at 60 to 90 grams of carbs per hour. It's a lot. Um, now, the question wasn't about what to do on race day. We have our plan, we have our options. It's, it's about that race prep week. And for me, working with elite age group level athletes and observing what the pros are doing, it's, it's all quite different. Um, I worry um, that a lot of athletes are actually under eating in race week. Um, athletes that do endurance tend to be very good at con control and discipline and routine and regime and the same thing over and over. And race taper week is a real challenge because suddenly you're doing less training, you're having to eat more, and this feels kind of uncomfortable. Um, when we glycogen load as well, it is expected that there's going to be some weight gain which can freak people out because they think, oh my God, I've gained weight. And all you've been doing is trying to get lean and have optimal power weight ratios. Um, that weight that you gain in taper week, it's just water. In fact, it's helping your hydration for race day. So you can expect and you, you would hope to see a little, a couple of pounds up towards the end of race taper week. And that's that to indicate that you've optimized your glycogen storage um, and that the cell is, 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 is the volume is good due to that glycogen storage and also the water that water weight that comes in with that. Um, but I, I would tend to see in a lot of elite athletes, especially women, that they actually don't carbohydrate load um, to the level where you would see a performance benefit. They're, they're not doing enough. Um, it needs to be up around the 10 to 12 grams per Per, per kilo carbohydrate intake in, in those last few days. Um, now, in reality, uh, when you have an athlete that's doing a lot of racing, we tend to see that they become more efficient. So perhaps that, that carbohydrate load where you're really eating a lot more is probably maybe one to two days rather than three days. And when you combine that with the reduced volume of training, you're seeing a total um, intake of, of, of better storage of glycogen. Sorry, I'm going on and on and on. Um, so what types of food do people eat? I suppose it really varies on what people like, what works for them, what sits well in their stomachs, what's the climate like? Like in Kona, where I would see the most pros and elites in what they're doing in that final countdown for race week, 
you can't really eat foods that heat you up. Um, so there will be a lot more fruit, a lot more fruit sugars. Everyone goes and has an acai bowl. Um, things are colder um, because it's just so freaking hot. Whereas if it's a colder um, climate race that you're preparing for, it's the food is going to be different because you're going to need warmer food. Now, what I've done here is I've laid out a selection of pretty simple, affordable um, foods that should be familiar to a lot of people that I recommend in, in that last race week. Now, I haven't got the full vegetable spread out, but foods that are going to be helpful um, from your veggies are going to be beets spinach, rocket, they're high in nitrates, um, ginger, turmeric is going to be helpful. Um, the plate in race week, the proportions on your plate are going to look a little bit different to normal. So we're looking at, instead of it being half a plate of veggies, maybe a quarter carbs, a quarter protein with little bits of healthy fat in there, we're looking at sort of half the plate as, as carbohydrate, um, a quarter protein and a quarter veg so the, the vegetable intake does drop down a little bit to make space for the additional carbs that you need so that you're not stuffed um, and some nutritionists and dietitians recommend dropping down your vegetable intake completely um, to prevent uh, runner's trots diarrhea I feel if your body's pretty accustomed to having a good intake of vegetables, which is really, really important that you don't suddenly drop them completely out um, because you could end up with constipation on race day and everyone wants to go to the loo before their race so that their tummy is nice and light and comfortable. So instead of making a radical change, just go for plainer, simpler things. Avoid anything that is likely to upset your system um, so anything new, try and avoid eating out if possible, um, where there's going to be more of a food poisoning risk. Um, avoid overly spicy, um, just in case your tummy isn't used to it. Like you are going to be a little bit more anxious in race week. So things are going to transit through the stomach a little bit faster. So I wouldn't be testing it, put it that way. Um, as well, anything that can create a lot more gassiness. So beans or legumes, if you're not really used to them or they tend to make you a little bit farty, I would avoid them. I would watch out for too much garlic, too much onions, too much, say, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, sprouts, kale, even fermented foods like sauerkraut. These are brilliant for us year round because they're so great for our immune systems and our hormonal balance and our liver and so many things. But you want to go with the, the plain and simple. Um, so a couple of foods that I would feel in race week are going to be really helpful for you. Um, I don't know if I can flip this over. It may not do it for me. So I'll just pick them up as I go. So rice. I love rice as an athlete food for race week and for pre-race meal. It is just so gentle on the tummy. It's got a good carbohydrate content. Um, it's gluten-free. Um, so we're looking at your regular white rice, or you could go for your short grain brown or your basmati. I love short grain brown because it's it's nice and sticky and it's got a really nutty flavor. Um, I like sushi rice as well. Um, wild rice, any of the rices, um, rinse them well before you cook them. Cook extra if you've tried it and tested it for a pre-rice breakfast. It can be fantastic with some broth and an egg. Um, so rice, brilliant. Um, polenta is my number two favorite. It's full of carbohydrates. It's gentle on your tummy. Cook extra. You can eat it cold for breakfast or throw an egg on it. Um, this is instant polenta. Cooks in three minutes. You could almost cook that in a hotel room with a, a kettle if you let it soak for long enough. Um, it's, I use it for breakfast and we use it for dinner. So polenta, brilliant. Um, other higher carb dinner options would be your pastas. If you're not gluten sensitive, some people do great on regular pasta. I prefer to, well, I'm gluten free and my boyfriend Garen just joins in the same meal. But there are some gluten free pasta options. So that's brown rice, so you could go with white rice pasta. There's things like buckwheat and sweet potato pasta buckwheat noodles. Now these last two are higher in fiber, might not be a great idea for everybody. I do feel that slightly plainer is always better uh, just because of nerves and anxiety is going to be increasing 
uh, how fast things run, run through your tummy. So if I was buying noodles, I'd go for the white rice ones rather than the whole grain. Um, although these are better for day-to-day -day training because they're more nutritious. Um, other things. So some people will, will choose the good old potato spud just after St. Patrick's Day. We, we had spuds at the weekend. And sweet potatoes. I don't feel they're high enough in carbohydrate. They've got a high water content. So if you're going to have potatoes, I would have them with rice or pasta or something else. Um, now, they're a great food. They're great for training if you boil them and have them on the bike. Um, but potato, not high enough on its own. And that would include things like, this is a giant butternut squash. This would be considered the vegetable part on your plate in race week. Um, other things, so... You know, I, if you're having veg with your dinner, um, try and go for the higher carb ones in race week. So we're talking root veg, carrots, parsnips, like I showed you, the sweet potato and the butternut squash, um, beets, because they're going to add to that carbohydrate intake while giving you the, new, the goodness of, of your vegetables with your minerals and your antioxidants. So things like... Spinach is a really low carb vegetable. It's almost a nothing carb. Um, so smaller amounts of these type of, of guys until after table week. Um, oats. Oats are brilliant. Um, so you can have those cooked up. Uh, what we tend to do on race morning is have them with an egg logged on, lobbed on top. Um, you can make the oats higher in carbohydrate by adding in things like dates, raisins, honey, jam, um, or little bits of maybe making it on milk instead of water if it sees your system is going to raise the carbohydrate content as well. Um, if you're not an oats person, a breakfast cereal or this is a healthy muesli and I'd add more fruit or banana um, just to bring the carbohydrate content up. Um, then you have things like bread. Uh, some people prefer plain toast or bread for their breakfast. Um, instead of going, normally I'd recommend sourdough, rye, whole grain. Um, so we would use soda bread, good old Irish soda bread. Um, I use gluten-free. So that's it, gluten-free soda bread out of the freezer. Um, stick to the plainer or lighter or whiter versions just so there's slightly less fiber, unless you know how your system's going to respond to it. Um, adding jam, banana, some egg for protein, um, or having oats as well are all good options. Um, I just pulled out a couple of other foods that can be handy in race week from what I have. Uh, we're not in race week in this kitchen. Um, so things like rice cakes. These are American ones. I love them. They're not quite so polystyrene-like. Um, and corn cakes. They're great as a snack during normal training. You know, add on your nut butters, um, your hummuses and dips and things. But regarding race week, they're very low in carbohydrate. Uh, so, you know, one rice cake is... 20 grams compared to a slice of bread. Oh, that's giving it in per 100, which is 36 grams. Give me five. It's going to be closer to 30. Um, so they're not quite as dense, and you'd have to eat more of them, which is going to fill you up extra. Uh, so things that are slightly more carbohydrate dense would be things like oat cakes um, or pita breads um, or healthy wraps. Um, like I talked about, dates and dried fruit are very dense sources of, of carbohydrate, which are brilliant for adding into things to help get those carbohydrates up. So we keep dates in the freezer. They sort of taste like toffee. Um, so they're regular dates. And we're in a male-female divide on dates in this house. These are smaller dates. Uh, Delic Noir, I think is what they're called. Uh, they're garrants. And then my dates are, of course, the fancy expensive ones, which are the Medjool dates. And they're huge. So that's a Medjool date there. And they're yummy. And again, I keep those in the freezer. Um, so these are carbohydrate dense. So you're looking at per 100 grams, 64 grams of carbohydrate. So other dried fruits like raisins, um, figs, apricots are going to be help helpful. 
in. Don't go OTT on adding loads of them in because they've a lot of fiber and your system may not be used to them. But in smaller amounts in your breakfast or in your snacks or in your smoothies, they're going to be handy. Uh, honey. Honey, this is... Um, Honey is a funny one to try. I recommend buying the real deal, proper, real honey from one place, which is actually quite challenging. Um, so the quali qu good quality honey. Manuka is also great, good for your immune system, so it can be a handy one. Uh, jam, if it's a good natural jam. So this is my homemade jam made last year with blackberries. Um, it's got antioxidants in there, as well as a rake of sugar, which is what gives you glycogen. <laughs> Um, and adding lots of bit, little bits of that into stuff. Then you have your fruit. Um, we're not big fruit eaters, so I don't have a massive amount, but fruit, um, fruit bowls, acai bowls, smoothies, roasted fruits, they're going to be helpful. Just don't go OTT on them. They have a lot more fructose, which can lead to diarrhea. So I think maybe earlier in the week, it's okay, but I would really taper down the fruit intake that you have towards the end of the week and maybe just stick with the banana and the dried fruit. Um, but fruit, that's a pomelo, your apple, um, they're going to give you some carbohydrate. Dairy um, has small amounts of carbohydrate in there as well as protein, so it can be handy in smoothies or on your porridge in your smoothies. Um, and then I just put in some of protein sources because I had them. So it's important to have little bits of carbohydrate still in, or sorry, protein in with your carbohydrates for reasons to do with recovery, um, your immune system, to stabilize blood sugar levels. So as you get the beginning of the week and in the week before your taper, I would be recommending salmon, um, especially the oily fish for your omegas to help with recovery, good amounts of red meat, poultry, eggs, um, and even your whey proteins and things. And then as you get towards taper week, Cut the quantity back just a little bit and stick to the slightly lighter proteins, especially in the two days before. So eggs, whey, white meats, poultry, um, fish are going to be gentler on your system, unless you're the type of person that thrives on the red meats. So in our house, we actually do have you know a good steak that's a good Irish ribeye um, in our night before we just find it it suits us but i will make sure that my portion is on the smaller side and that my carbohydrates are on the larger side because that's what i need for racing and i've i've tried higher protein loading days they don't work you need carbohydrate and you need to have practiced that um so taper week just to summarize start to Cut back on the training volume, start to increase on the carbohydrate intake, spread evenly across the day. So it's a small bit more in every meal and snack. Choose sources that suit your system. Um, don't do anything crazy different. Do not start to copy everyone around you. There is going to be people doing their crazy thing. And the last thing you want to do is deviate from what you know works for you. Um, you need to up your intake significantly and use more dense sources so that you're not full to the brim. And one error that a lot of people can make is that they'll overdo the fat. So suddenly the carb load meal is lasagna or a cheesy pasta. And you've just put a load of calories into a food that isn't your body's preferred choice for fuel. Um, we have fat on us. We don't need to be fat loading before our race. We've ample. If we've trained right and used a periodized nutrition strategy along with our training, we're super efficient at using the fat that we have. So take the carbohydrates on board to help you for what you're using during your event. And we all will be oxidizing carbohydrates. So no matter how fat efficient we are, if, if we're tr racing with intensity, we will be burning carbohydrates. So we will need some in the tank and we will need extra. If the duration of the event is over three hours. Um, so hopefully that's helped you out. If you've any questions, 
um, or if you've any super cool things that you yourself eat, like our pre-race meal is generally polenta or rice with some root veggies. Um, sweet corn actually will add in there as well and a little bit of protein, usually a steak. Um, we'll raise up what we're eating across the week. So definitely say we're racing on Saturday. Thursday night will be a bigger meal. Um, all of Friday we'll have more carbohydrate across the day. Um, we will drink um, water with an electrolyte in there or add an, a little bit more salt into our meals to aid the hydration process. Uh, we will not freak out about eating more. We will stay off our feet and not be doing the expo or all of the other crazy stuff to tire yourself out the day before the race. Race morning, we will stick to our tried and tested breakfasts. Um, they may be different. I may need to bring whatever. I, I'm fussy and I, I'm gluten-free, which is a pain in the ass. So I'll generally make sure I have with me what I need. And why stress myself out with suddenly finding that what I want isn't available. So we'll generally carry stuff with us when we're travel. travel even um, Garen will bring, you know, packets of oats with him that we can use in the hotel just in case we're up too early before breakfast. So just think ahead, plan where are you going to be, what's happening, where you're going to be able to eat. Do I need to bring anything with me? Um, commit. You cannot overeat in that those last two days. Um, you can eat, overeat on the wrong things, but most a a athletes find it a bit challenging to eat enough. Um, so just keep challenging yourself with, with that little bit more. And you know then, if you've put in the effort in taper week with eating a little bit more, that just say you wake up on race morning and you're a little bit nervous and you don't quite manage to get all of your breakfast in or during the race... Um, tummy is a little bit off and you miss one gel on your program that you've planned ahead of, you know, how you're going to eat on, on your race, you have a little bit more leeway for these things because you've done a good carbohydrate load. Now, some athletes could get away with no carbohydrate load and, and I see it often. However, if something goes wrong on the race, you just haven't got the reserve. Um, and you must bear in mind that racing, you're in a chronic deficit. We cannot get into our stomachs the same amount of fuel that we're actually burning the other side. So if you're the person who has just a couple of salads with some protein before their race because that's what you're concerned about, race weight and, and these things, you just have not got a fallback. Um, so just try it. Try a, a good, decent carb load and report back. Cool. Bye.